designers, I'm Charlie, I'm a web designer, and in this video I want to give you a basic 101 introduction to using Figma for designing websites. Figma is the tool that I use to do the majority of my design work these days. I think it's a great piece of software, the team are constantly working on improving it, but I know it can be overwhelming to either switch to a new tool or just get started using a new piece of software, so that's what I'm here for. Let's just jump right into it. This is Figma. The great thing about Figma is that you can have either a free or a paid account. With a free account, let me just pull up the pricing here to show you, uh, you can have up to three projects, whereas with a paid account you can have unlimited and there's also a few other benefits as well uh, that I'll come to later on in this video. I have two teams, so one is a paid team and that is the ConvertKit team, that's what I use for work. And one is my Charlie Marie team, which is just me, myself and I, and I use this for my personal projects and my own website, that sort of thing. So with a free account, you can have up to three projects, but a project is not a file. This was really confusing to me when I first got started, so I wanted to point this out. Uh, a project is kind of like a folder that files are organized into. So you can see here that I have two projects in my free account with multiple files within them. So. Get started with a free account and it'll do you good for, for quite a while, I think. Let's start by me showing you one of my files. And um, just by the way, I'm using the Figma desktop app on Mac. Um, I prefer to do that than use it in the browser. It just feels more like, I don't know, like it's a separate app and I like having the icon in my dock, that sort of thing. But it's pretty much the same as what's on the web. So, you know, whichever you want to do. A Figma file has an unlimited canvas, which I love. And you can also have multiple pages within the file. So see how I've arranged this particular design. I've got um, the to build page here, which is what I hand over to the developer I work with, Corey. I have my design, which has my design process in it. And then I have the wireframe, which is where I got started. So I like to just split up my project in different pages this way. And it's really easy to add another page just from this plus button up here. On the left hand side in Figma, we have all our frames, which are kind of like an artboard or a canvas, uh, and then all of your layers as well. Please don't judge the fact that my layers are very messy and mostly unnamed. <laughs> and then on the right hand side here is where most of your editing takes place. So that's, that's what we're working with. Let's start a new file and I'll show you how to get started. So the first thing that I want to do when I'm getting started with a new design is add a frame to the canvas, obviously. So to do that, I'm going to click on frame up here in the tools and you'll see that Figma has a few preset sizes that you can just click on to add to the canvas. So if I click on desktop here, now I've got a desktop like size screen, or if you'd like, you could also draw your own size frame, depending on what size graphic you're needing to create. And you can change the values up here to get something more exact if you would like. Then the next thing I do when I'm getting started with a design is add a grid. So if I come in here, you can see that I already have some grids set up. Let me show you how to create something like that. So say I want to create a grid and I want it to actually be columns and I want there to be, mm, let's say 10 columns. I definitely want them to sit in the center of the page and for them to take up, uh, maybe it would be like 70 pixels each. Now what I can do is come in here to these four dots. If I click this plus button, I can save this grid that I've just set up as a style. So let's just call it test style for now. Create that. And now you'll see it's added to these options here. That means that I could then go and apply it over on this other frame that I have as well, although that frame wasn't quite wide enough to fit the grid. And if I want to make sure I can use this grid outside of this file, maybe I want to use it across all of the files that I have. Um, first, I will save this that's saving the file in general. And if I come over to assets here and click on this little book, don't worry about all this stuff, I'm gonna show you that in a sec. Uh, click on this little book. This is my library and I can publish this test system to the library. So let's go ahead and do that. And now if I start a new file, I can come in here again to the library and as you can see, I can turn on this test system here. This gives me access to use any of the styles that are set up in this file in this new file here. Let me show you how this is working. I'm going to add another desktop frame to this new blank file. And then we're going to come into our grid, click on the four dots, and there is our test grid style. So we can use it. 
And as you can see, I have set up grids according to the bootstrap uh, design system, which is what we use on our marketing site. And if you want to know what the settings are for that, because people always ask, I'm just going to bring it up on screen here, zoom in on it nice and big so that you can copy them. <laughs> So I hope you're still with me after that. There was a lot of jumping around, but you're starting to see some of the power of Figma that you can save styles to be reused across different files and it can just really help to speed up your design process. And it's not just grids that you can save. You can also save colors. You can save type styles. You can save like effects, that sort of thing. It's, it's pretty powerful. Let's show you how to create some of those things. So to add a shape, to start putting things onto your frame, you use this menu here, there is a few different options, um, or you can draw a shape using the pen tool, which we'll talk about vectors in a second. I'm just gonna add a box in here. And do you see those red lines that are showing up as I'm extending this box? It's trying to help me align it to my grid, which is really useful. Coming in here to my fill settings, I'll show you that I can have my ConvertKit colors are all set up as a color library for me to pick from if I'd like. With a fill on a shape, you can also add multiple. So say if I wanted to have a gradient on top of this navy color here. And this is also where you add images. So let me come into image and let me add something. Oh cool, how about this photo of me with my skateboard that I bought myself for Christmas. <laughs> Um, this is how photos are handled in Figma, is that they are a fill on a shape. So even if I had added a photo via this place image setting here, it's rather large, but we can see that this has come in as a fill on a shape, just like it's working on this one here. So with an image, you can have it fit the whole image in the frame. You could crop it, so this way I could like you know, zoom in on a certain part of the image if I wanted to, make this like a headshot or something. Or you can also tile an image, so you can have it repeat multiple times. There's a few basic image control things here as well, um, but usually, personally, I tend to open up Photoshop for anything like heavy image editing, but it's handy to just be able to do a few quick alterations right here in Figma. On my shape up here, I can edit the size just by typing in numbers in these boxes. I can also add a radius to it. So I can actually turn this square into a circle by adding a big enough radius if I'd like. And now it's kind of looking like an avatar, isn't it? I can add a stroke to my shape as well, just by clicking on here. And there's a few different options here if, if we're wanting to create like a dotted line around the edge for some reason. Um, let me just change the color. I can add a drop shadow to my image if I'd like, just by clicking on this effects button here. And there's a few other um, blur and shadowing options if you'd like, but let's just make this shadow a little bigger. And if I wanna save this new drop shadow style that I've created for use in other files or to use again in this file, just like we did for the grid, I click the four dots, I click the plus button, I give it a name. You'll see here there's a little dot up next to assets and then Coming in here, there's a little blue dot on the book. Every time you add something uh, saved as a style to a library that you've published, remember we clicked publish on this library so I could show you the grid system in that other file, uh, it wants to update that library. So that way it can bring in any new styles that you've saved since the last time that you published. So I can click here to publish that change and now this new shadow option that I just saved, I'll create a shape real quickly to show you, is available in my other file. So we could kind of make this like a little, I don't know, avatar thingy up here perhaps. Maybe I want to add my name next to it using the text icon. Figma brings in Google fonts, so there is a big list here, but you can also use ones from your own system. If, you're, if you've got a font, in your system on your Mac, then they should be showing up here too. I can just click on option and drag something to make a copy of it. And just like we were saving styles before, we could save a text style too, again, just by clicking in here. So I have all of the type styling that I use on the ConvertKit site set up in my shared system for any new file that I open. Let me show you how vectors work in Figma because this is another really cool way that this works that was quite different to any other design software I'd used before I used this. So we're going to use the pen tool to draw a shape. Pretty regular, right? Like it works pretty much the same. This is where it gets cool, where Figma has what's called vector networks. 
So in, if I wanted to add another little triangle up the top here to sort of make a cool geometric shape, instead of drawing a brand new shape and then like grouping them together or, you know, combining, I can actually just keep on drawing within the same shape here by clicking on this point and just adding in the next triangle that I wanted to make. And then we're going to click done, or you can also click escape to get out of that editing mode. And now this is just one whole shape that I can edit together, adding a fill, adding a stroke, whatever I want to do. And at any time I can double click on it and come in to edit points if I'd like to. It can take a bit to get used to how this whole vector networks thing works, but I'm going to leave a link down below to a really great uh, post on the Figma site about this that really helped me get my head around it. So I think it'll help you too. So another thing that we can do as well as saving styles is we can save elements that we've created to be reused in other files as well. Now this is a feature that right now is only available on paid accounts, but I'm going to show you how it works anyway, in case this is interesting to you. So we're going to call this, let's just pretend this is a logo of some sort. I don't know what kind of business this is for. Now, if I right click on this shape and go create component, you'll see that it's uh, changed to have these four little diamonds up here. This means that I can make a copy of this shape. I can duplicate it and if I want to make an edit to it, like say I decide I want to bring this side in a little, you can see as I edit this one, it also automatically updates on any copy that I have of that shape in my frame as well. So that's what all of these things are here that you're seeing in my assets panel because I have a design system for the ConvertKit marketing site set up so that I can easily just drag in a button and add it to my design whenever I'm you know, needing to add one. And if I update this button in my design system, it'll update across all of the files that I've used that button in. So that's a pretty powerful feature. That is one of the reasons why we have a paid Figma account for our ConvertKit team is so that we can make use of things like this because it just makes my design process a whole lot faster. I have done a whole separate video about how I set up this design system in Figma for our marketing website. So if you'd like to get a little more advanced and watch that, I will leave a link to it on a card and also in the description for you. I'm going to bring in something from this design system just to quickly show you another um, editing feature in Figma. See, I've got this element here and as I shrink it in, just this text changes. None of this stuff is like squishing in or anything like that. And that is because of the way I've set up the constraints on this. Um, I'm going to detach this. So this is what you can do if you ever want to edit a component you've placed and remove it from being attached to the master one. And you can tell which is a master because a master will have the four diamonds versus a like child component will have an empty diamond, if that makes sense. So this is now no longer a component. So if I, I've detached it, if I make changes in my design system, they will no longer update right here, just because it's something I want to show you. So if I had set this to scale, which is how a lot of things um, are by default, when I shrink this in, my icon is going to get very deformed, which is not what I want. And so I have this set up to be constrained to the left and to the top. So that, that way, when I shrink in this canvas, the only thing that's changing in size is my text, which is set to scale. And um, this title at the top here is set to left and right. So it'll always stay relative to the same position that it's in right now on the left and the right. And that means that this happens when I shrink in the box of my component. That might be getting a little advanced, but just if you find yourself confused about why some things are responding in one way and like differently to others, you're not sure what's going on there, constraints is usually the answer. Um, I found that when I imported my old files from Sketch um, and I would change the canvas uh, just by, you know, pulling up or down on the bottom of it here, most of the things when they were imported were set to scale, so all of the pieces of my design were distorting. But a cool trick if you want to resize something without it paying attention to constraints is to hold down the command key as you expand, and then it will um, leave your design untouched. So that's just a little tip there if you're moving from Sketch, because I found that an issue when I was getting started. Okay, let me show you how to export something from Figma. So let's say I want to export just this image here with its shadow behind it. I can click on the plus icon next to export, then I can choose which scale I want that exported as, whether I want it PNG, JPEG, SVG, PDF, I can add a suffix to it if I'd like, and when I click export I can save it um, 
anywhere that I'd like. You can also export the CSS of elements. I sometimes export vector shapes by right clicking and copying as SVG and then just like pasting it into the code wherever I need it. And speaking of code, you can also access some of the CSS styling of elements in Figma through the code tab. So see here, this shows you all of the CSS you'd need to add to get the um, font like styling the same as this piece of text here. Figma is design software. It's not a website building tool. Some people get confused about that. So you cannot just directly export all of the HTML and CSS of your design. You will need to go and build it. Um, either with code or in Webflow or whatever it is that you're doing. So Figma is design software, it's for getting your ideas out and figuring out what you want it to look like. It's not for building a website. Um, what you can do though is build prototypes. So um, to do, show you that, let me bring up an example I prepared earlier. This is a file where I was designing um, some new navigation for our marketing site. So in the prototyping tab, you can see that there's crazy lines all over the place. So if I click this play button up here, this goes into presentation mode. And now I can interact with the things that I've set up in my design. So like this drop down here animates the menu down. I can show the hover state. So this is a way that you could use Figma to share your designs with stakeholders and um, get their feedback on it because they could also click here and uh, click anywhere on the screen to leave a comment about your design as well. You can also just share the whole file if you'd like by clicking the share button here because um, what's great about Figma is that it's collaborative. So myself and Dylan, the product designer that I work with, we could both be in a file at the same time. And when someone else is in a file, you can like see where their mouse is on the screen and it updates real time with what they're working on. So it's a great tool for collaborating with other designers. Or like I said, I share all these files with Corey, the developer that I work with as well. So he can see the latest version of the designs that I'm creating that he needs to build. In that prototype you saw where the drop down menu animated in and out, I'd used a feature called Smart Animate for that. Figma does have some animation um, prototyping features, but I would say they're a little more advanced, so I won't go into them in this video. But if you'd like to see me play around with this tool, because I filmed like my first reactions as I tried it out for the first time, I will leave a link to that in my card as well. Hopefully you've seen that Figma can be a really powerful tool for design, but it can also be really simple if you want it to be. Uh, and don't feel overwhelmed by all these like components and animation tools and things like that when you're getting started. Just start adding things onto your canvas, building out your design, and um, you can add in all those little more advanced features as you go and uh, as you learn. I hope this video gave you a good introduction to the tool though and maybe makes you feel a little more confident to go in and start designing with it. If you've got any questions, then you can ask me in the comments, but honestly, Figma themselves have a really great like resources and learning section of their site. That's where I've learned how to do most things. So I will leave a link to that in the description. You should go and check that out, watch a couple of tutorials and things like that. And I know you'll be up and running with Figma in no time. Thanks for watching. Please give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it or if you found it useful. And I will see you in my next one.